We're in Alistar, we're catching the uh, 1.30 train, ETS. And as you can see, it's just coming into uh, station now. We're at uh, dredge number five, I think it was. It's uh, Batu Gajin or Gajin or something like that. We rented a car today, so this is uh, one of the stops we've made and stopped a couple other places, had breakfast, and which isn't your typical breakfast, but it was really good. Okay, it was uh, dredge number five. We're going for a swim. Last thing I want to do is wear a hernet. The first place and at the land, at the very, what do you call it, uh, very large land, very large land. Huh. Huh. Very large land. This is called Kelly's Castle. There is a story behind it. A gentleman had this castle built. I don't think he lived to see the end of it. Anyways, it's, it'll be interesting to see what it's all about. It even has a moat going around it. Ooh, that's a long ways up. at the castle anyways. History. William Kelly Smith was from a village in Scotland known as Kellis. In 1890, at the age of 20, he arrived in the then undeveloped Melee. Here he met an estate owner called Alma Baker, who had won the concessions from the state government to clear 360 hectares of forest in Pecker. 
with the substantial profits made from the business venture. With Alma Baker, Smith started planting rubber trees and dabbled in the tin mining industry. In time, he became the owner of the Kinta Kellis Estate and the Kinta Kellis Tin Dredging Company. Now, with his fortune made, he returned home to marry his Scottish sweetheart, Agnes, and brought her over to Malaysia in 1903. The following year, the couple was blessed with a daughter, whom they named Helen. For many years after that, Agnes tried to convince, but to no avail, William Smith desperately wanted a son and heir to take over his empire in the Malay Isles. After many years, Agnes finally gave birth to a son, Anthony, in 1915. The birth of his child was the start of an even greater success for the William Smith. To celebrate Anthony's birthday, William Smith decided to expand on his mansion. Smith started planning for a huge castle and he planned to call Kella's house after his homeland in Scotland. As you can see, some of the castle is falling apart. It's quite a unique building, you know, considering the time and, and the location, really. Ooh, she's definitely passionate. Well, maybe this is the way we should have come up. Into the depth of the castle. Hmm. Not so deep. <laughs> it's still pretty neat. What people won't do with too much money. There's another spiral case over there. Yeah, that's what I remember that. No, I was on the one that went downstairs. You were on the one that went upstairs. Definitely lots of rooms, that's for sure, isn't there? Bathroom and secret passage to his sister's room. Uh, that's a staircase that I couldn't get up. Cool. Yeah, no kidding. Way back then. Definitely. Pretty neat.
the master bedroom. You know, look at the doors, like they're arched. Master bedroom, the wall, wall features, elegant and ornate neoclassic friezes designed to framework of art. The staircase leads to the floor below and out of the castle. All the rooms incorporate natural ventilation to temper the heat and humidity of the tropics. It is ironic that while this huge castle with its numerous rooms was being built, it would likely have been empty most of the time. Agnes and Anthony were in Britain for the latter, latter's education. When Helen returned to Britain, William would have lived alone. He had also had spent more and more of his time in Portuguese Timor, where he secured a large concession for planting. Agnes never returned to Malay. She lived in England in a well-appointed apartment near Hardis. Nice little balcony. This is, I think, it's cool. Spiral staircase. This spiral staircase led to a secret room, a hiding place for his wife and children in case of emergency. His basement room could also have been the circular dark room for, for, for photography. Sure, what all the holes are about. Probably just a breeze to get a breeze, I guess. You look down that way, you can look like there's going to be a rain coming. After here, we head up back to Epo and we're going to go take a look at a couple of um, cave temples which are just at the outskirts of Epo. Not sure, but I think I told you that we did rent a car. It's uh, not much, but it gives us our transportation. Quite an amazing structure. Truly. It must have been cut, I assume. I would assume. Literally on top of the castle. Okay, with our second uh, temple of the day, Kek Luk Tung. It's supposed to be one of the better ones 
in the area anyways. And if you look up on the mountainside you can see tights, like tights, but they're on the outside so it looks like it's just a dripping of the rock almost, but uh, yeah. Looks interesting. It is three o'clock, so I think we got about three hours to look at this. Actually, tomorrow we're off to um, Cameron Highlands. There's the entrance. I wonder how often any of this stuff breaks off. Or if it ever does. I assume it must. I'm not sure what the work of art's about. Almost like uh, mud. I don't know how many bats are up there. <laughs> well, remember, you can walk back on that way, you can see all the green ferns over there. I didn't notice that before. This is a no. could be dead fish. It just keeps thinking. Be a heck of a surprise if one of the things see them tumbling down. Because they look like they're pretty uh, large and heavy. A lot more uh, authentic, I guess, than the last one we were at. Just a lot more to see, a lot larger. Very breezy, so it's very cool in here.
through the camera. In the cave is pretty neat. Look how the stuff is dripped. This is looking at the cave, or the cavern, whatever, I guess cave. Anyways, it goes right through the, okay, I'll call it a mountain. Comes up the other side. On the other side, you've got this. Pond, a walking area, grassy, and I'm going to say there are monkeys on this side. Uh, there are monkeys. Anyways, the last one we were at, we've probably seen, I'll bet you close to 20. That we're walking across top of a building, high line. I don't know where they're going. We I mean, were quite a ways away, so it's kind of tell me how big they were. But, you know. And here's the other side of the cave looking back into it. You can see a little bit of uh, rot or openings there as well. It's. Um, like I said, it's quite interesting. So it looks like the pond has got fish in it. <laughs> Scientists do not swim. Yeah, I think that pretty much goes without saying. Uh, lime, limestone uh, mountains. Kind of neat how it's been eroded away or melted away, I guess. So this area is kind of a, a neat oasis, actually. Really, it's peaceful, it's serene.
Well, we just went down Concubine Lane. Uh, disappointed. <laughs> well, it's Friday morning, 10 to 9. Heading up to the uh, Cameron Highlands, and we got... We're still heading that direction, but anyways, we figured we'd stop along the side of the road finally. It's quite a road, it's extremely windy. And I think it does some passing in some places as well. A little questionable. Anyways, the reason to stop is like, they're not greenhouses, but they're, I'll call them greenhouses for about lack of better words, but uh, it's just amazing everywhere, everywhere has got these. We're at the BOH uh, tea plantation. Got here, it's quarter to ten. Probably, I don't know, I guess close to two hour drive, really. Anyways, um, we'll do the tour and we'll see what we see. These are all tea bushes. They're, well, they're trees. I thought they were, I don't know, more of a bush. I mean, they're very low, very short. But the uh, stems on them are quite large. And as you can see all through here, there's a whole bunch of tea all over the place. And oh, I'm sure it'd be a bugger to pick it. Because the area is extremely hilly. So I'm assuming the people that are doing the picking are in very good shape.
And I say, I think this would be a grueling occupation. No, I was just talking to the camera. Right, I'm almost up to the chi center here. I mean, I'll be honest with you, I didn't know anything about tea before. I just can't believe the uh, terrain it's grown on. The BOH Tea Center. I think they also give you a tour of how the tea is uh, made as in the drying process and stuff like that. Like I said, interesting to see, but at the end of the day, was it worth it? Mm. Yeah, car rental, two hour drive, two hour drive back. I'm glad I've seen it, but the debate is out if it's worth it. And we did try going to the mossy forest, that was a bust. Um, somewhat rainy season, so. They've closed the road. They don't want you going down there. 
I had my truck, I wouldn't have an issue with it. A rental car I have an issue with, so.